everyone. So for today, we'll be working on the solution for week 6, credit. So do note that this is the week 6 problem set. So if you're actually working on week 1's problem sets for credit, please watch my other video that's linked in the description below. So this problem set, what we want to do is to key in a credit card number, and the system will check if it is a valid credit card number, and if it is, it will then identify if it's a Visa, Amex, or Mastercard. We are also given the characteristics of each card type, and we are told that a Visa card number contains 13 digits and starts with 4, Amex contains 15 digits and starts with 34 or 37, and Mastercard will contain 16 digits and starts with either 51, 52, 53, 54, or 55. So what will be the structure of the code? So we will first prompt the user to key in an input, and check that the input is valid. Then we will apply Loon's algorithm, and for this walkthrough, I will go through two possible solutions for Loon's algorithm in Python. And the first one will be done by converting what we did in week 1 from C into Python syntax. And the second solution that I will share will be the more efficient way of doing Loon's algorithm in Python syntax. Then, after we confirm that it's a valid credit card number, we will then identify the type of credit card used. So just want to say thank you for watching this video, and do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. This greatly helps to bump up this video to others who are watching the video, and it greatly helps my channel as well. So moving on, let's work on the first step. So as mentioned, for this walkthrough, we'll be spending more time comparing the differences between C and Python syntax, as we already covered the logic of the solution in our week 1's video. So if you have not watched it yet, please refer to the link in the description below. So one tip that really helped me to prepare for this solution is actually to refer to lecture 6 notes for a helpful compilation of Python syntax, and you should definitely check it out too. So for this step, what we want to do is to get the user to key in a number that is greater than 0. So in C, this is what we have worked out, where we used a do while loop. This means that we'll keep running the prompt for the user to key in the input as long as the input received is less than or equals to 0. So what will this look like in Python? So according to lecture 6 notes, it states that while there is no do while loop in Python, we can actually achieve the same effect with while true. So this is the sample that they gave us in the notes where the parts in blue are what we need to change to suit our credit solution. So you can see that in this example, it states that while true, which means that whatever comes after that will run perpetually unless a certain condition is met. So while true, n equals to get in height where we prompt the user for height. So in this example, as long as height is greater than 0, we use brick. So this will actually exit the loop since we've actually met the condition that we are looking for. So that is, if input meets this condition, brick such that we can continue with the program. So changing it to fit our solution for credit, while true means that whatever comes after that will run perpetually unless a certain condition is met. So while true, card equals to get int to prompt the user to key in the card number. And as long as card is greater than 0, we will use brick. So this will exit the loop if we have met some condition. And this is how we prompt the user to key in the card number and check that it is a valid input. So let's write our program for this. So we'll start by first importing get int from the CS50 library, and after that we'll do while true card equals to get int, and we'll prompt the user for the card number. And if the card key in is greater than zero, that is when we use brick to continue with the rest of our program. So moving on, we'll apply Loon's algorithm to find out if the card number is valid. And so for this problem set, I'll run through two possible solutions as mentioned earlier on. So the first one will be done by simply converting whatever we did in C to Python syntax. And the alternative one will be the more efficient version of Loon's algorithm. So as a recap, I'll just briefly run through how we do Loon's algorithm. So do note that we already covered this in week 1, so I'll not spend too much time on this. So for Loon's algorithm, we will actually first select every alternate number starting from the second last digit as underlined in blue. Then we will multiply these digits by 2 and add these digits together. Then we will actually add this to the sum of digits that's not multiplied by 2 as underlined in green. And if the last digit of this total sum that we get is 0, the card is valid. So how do we do this in C? So starting with the first step of selecting every alternate number starting from the second last digit, which means we are looking for even digits here. So we are told that to find the last digit of a string of numbers, we will actually use the modulo operation which will give us the remainder of a division. So taking the example of 4298 as our number, when we divide 4298 by 10, the remainder we get is 8. So this means that 4298 modulo 10 is 8. And likewise, 5612 modulo 10 is 2. And that is how we find the last digit in a string of numbers. So how do we find the second last digit? So if 4298 modulo 10 gives us the last digit, then what would 4298 modulo 100 give? So taking 4298 divided by 100, we get 98. So 4298 modulo 100 is 98, which is the last two digits of the string. 
So to identify the digit 9, which is the second last digit of the string, we will then take 98 divide by 10. Then how do we find the fourth last digit? As it is two places away, that actually hints the pattern for our formula. So 4298 modulo 10,000 will give us 4298, and dividing this number by 1,000, we get 4. So in C, this is what we had to do to find each digit. And to convert this to Python syntax, cut 1 equals to cut modulo 100 divided by 10, where 100 can be represented as 10 to the power of 2, which is represented by 2 asterisks. Now in Python, because input received is taken as a string, if we left cut 1 as simply cut modulo 100 divided by 10, it will actually give us 2.8, which is a string. We need this to be an integer, so we actually need to modify our formula to be cut 1 equals to int cut modulo 100 divided by 10, and with this, cut 1 equals to 2. So the rest of our formula will look like this. Then we need to multiply each by 2, and then we need to add these digits together, as seen on the slide. So the largest single digit you can get is 9, and in the event we have a double digit here like 12, we will need to further break this down and sum its digits together too. So using cut 6 as an example, we will actually need to take cut 6 equals to 1 plus 2, so that will be its first digit plus second digit. So just now we already talked about how we can use modulo to find each digit. So cut 6 will equals to cut 6 modulo 100 divided by 10 to find the first digit, followed by just cut 6 modulo 10 to get the second digit. So this is what it will look like in Python, and just remember that we need to indicate int for each. Then we need to pick out the numbers that were previously not multiplied by 2, that is, the odd digits in a cut number, and we can do this again by using the modulo function. Then we need to add all these digits together, and I used sum3 to represent this. And if the last digit of sum3 equals to 0, the cut is valid. So that is, if sum3 modulo 10, which is to find the last digit, equals to 0, we will then continue with the rest of our program. So let's do our code for this. So continuing from where we just left off in the earlier step, now we're going to say we're going to find the digits to be multiplied by 2 for this first section. So as discussed, cut 1 equals to int cut modulo 10 to the power of 2 divided by 10 times 2. Right, and then likewise, when I do cut 2 onwards, you can see that I will actually multiply it and by increasing 2 decimal places each time. So it will now be 10 power of 4, and then it will be divided by 10 to the power of 3. So let me just copy and paste this really quickly since I have 8 cuts to do. So then I'll just rename it cut 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And again, when I put modulo 10 to the power of, I will just increase it by 2 places for every line I go down. Right? And likewise for the next. So it will be 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Okay? So this is what we're doing now. So next, what we need to do is to add the sum of the digits together. So what we're doing now is to identify the first digit and second digit of cut 1. So we're breaking it up and summing it up together. Likewise for cut 2, similar. So I'll just copy and paste this for all 8 cuts. So do note that for this particular solution here, I'm just directly converting whatever we did in C in week 1. And definitely, I think there were discussions about how this could actually be made more efficient. So this will be just a direct conversion first for week 1 solution, which I do think um, it was more tedious like, in terms of the steps. But later on, we'll go through the more efficient solution, okay? So we will see how we can actually clean this up later on. So for now, we actually sum up the digits that we have found. So that would be sum 1. And then now let's look at all the digits that we did not actually multiply by 2. So you can see cut 9. Again, what we're going to do is that we'll take cut modulo 10. And then for cut 10, again, we will modulo it by 10 to the power of 3. Right, so again, we're moving down two places. So let me just duplicate these lines and then I'll just edit what needs to be edited.
Okay, so as mentioned, we need to add this all up together. And then after that, I'll use sum 3, which will be sum 1 plus sum 2. Yep, so that's actually how we do Loon's algorithm. So next, let's actually work on the solution B, which is actually the more efficient and cleaner version of Loon's algorithm with Python. So when I was actually looking for a better way to present Loon's algorithm, I came across this method that is a shorter and cleaner version. And in the video description below, I've included a source of this code for your reference. So while we did not come up with this code ourselves, I do think that throughout our coding journey, you will find that we will end up looking for a lot of things on Google. But what makes a difference to me is actually stopping to learn the logic behind it. So we can actually learn new concepts and apply it to future solutions. And that will be how we grow. So going back to this, let's break this down step by step. So for this section, we'll actually get the card number as a list of numbers with digits off. So what digits off does is that it actually iterates through each character in a string of numbers and turns it into a list of integers. So this means that someone who keys in this credit card number will actually have this output, which is now a list of integers. So for Loon's algorithm, remember that we need to get a list of odd and even digits starting from the last digit of the credit card number. So this is where we introduce the double colon operator, where x double colon y essentially means get the y element starting from position x. So for example, if you have a list of numbers starting from 1 to 9 listed as such, a 2 double colon 3 means you will actually get the third element starting from position 2. So you will actually get 3, 6, 9. Then what would digits minus 1 double colon minus 2 give? So this is where we learn something new again, which are negative indexes. So negative indexing actually starts from where the array ends. So an index value of minus 1 actually gives you the last element, minus 2 gives you the second last element, and so on. So this is actually how you go through the array starting from the back. So back to our example of the list of numbers from 1 to 9, a minus 1 will actually give you an output of 9 because that will be the last digit of the array that you will extract. And likewise, a minus 1 double colon minus 2 will actually give you 9, 7, 5, 3, 1. Right. And then applying this back to the credit card number that we are testing with, digits minus 1 double colon minus 2 will actually give you 4, a few zeros, 3 and 0. While digits negative 2 double colon negative 2 will give you 1, a couple of zeros, 6, 0 and 4. And that's how you actually get the odd digits and even digits within the credit card number. So do remember that we actually need to add all these up together. So we'll use checksum and we will first start by adding all the odd digits together first. So that's why we have checksum equals to the sum of all the odd digits that we found earlier on. And now what we need to do is that we need to multiply all even digits by 2. So that's how we use for D in even digits. We'll actually add together the digits of the even numbers where each will be multiplied by 2. And then we'll return checksum modulo 10, which will give us the value of the last digit of checksum. So let's put this in C. So here what I'll do is I'll write what Loon checksum will actually do. Right, so we'll use digits of to iterate through a string of numbers to get it to get a list of integers. Right, then after that I'll use my negative indexing to get actually the list of odd digits. And likewise, the list of even digits. Then we'll use checksum. Where we will start with the easier one first, which is just to add up all the odd digits together first. Then we'll move on to working for the even digits, where we actually need to multiply every digit within that um, list um, by 2. Then after that, we'll return checksum modulo 10 just to get the last digit of checksum. Okay? And as you can see, this is the much cleaner version of Loon's algorithm that we can do in Python syntax. So if you found this video helpful so far, do remember to subscribe to the channel and this will greatly help my channel in terms of the growth and the visibility to others who are also looking for similar solutions and walkthroughs. So moving on, what we want to actually do now is to identify the type of credit card used. So we are told that these are the characteristics of each of the cards where Visa contains 13 or 16 digits starting with 4, Amex contains 15 digits starting with 34 or 37, and Mastercard contains 16 digits and starts with either 51, 52, 53, 54 or 55. So let's start with Visa first. 
where we already have the conditions as to what will qualify a card number as visa. So how do we find the first digit of the card number? So we need to keep dividing the number by 10 until the quotient left is a single digit, which is less than 10. So in this example, where we use the number 429, we take 429 divided by 10, which gives us 42. And then we'll divide 42 again by 10 until we cannot divide it anymore. And our quotient is 4. And that is how you find the first digit of the credit card. So in C, we have put that as long as Visa equals 2 or is greater than 10, we will keep dividing Visa by 10. So what will this look like in Python? They actually look quite similar. So we'll actually just put as well Visa is greater than or equals to 10. We will take Visa int Visa divided by 10. So remember that we actually need to use int because in Python, the input of our credit card number is taken as a string and we need to change it to int. So moving on very quickly to Amex, these are the conditions as to what makes a card an Amex card. So how do you find the first two digits of the card number? So since an Amex card contains 15 digits, we can divide the card by 10 to the power of 13 to find the first two digits. So in C, we have put that while Amex is greater than or equals to 10 to the power of 13, we will keep dividing. So in Python, we'll put that while Amex is greater than or 10 to the power of 13, which is represented by the two asterisks here, we'll keep dividing it accordingly, and it looks similar to what we have in C. Lastly, for MasterCard again, we will need the first two digits, so we'll do what we did for Amex. So since a MasterCard has 16 digits, we'll divide it by 10 to the power of 14 to get the first two digits. So this is what we got in C earlier in week 1, and this is what it looks like in Python. So let's put this all together in Python syntax. So you can see here, we'll start by declaring the length of the card to be 0 first, and again we'll just declare our Visa, Master and Amex numbers to be equals to card. So now this is a section that we'll liberate to determine whether it's a Visa, Amex or MasterCard. So length will be equals to the length of the string of card. So starting with Visa first. So our Visa is greater than or equals to 10. Then we'll keep dividing it. Then after that, we'll say the condition for the card to be an Amex, which is our Amex is greater than or equals to 10 power 13. We'll just keep dividing it accordingly by the power of 13. And again, we'll identify if the card is a master card and divide it accordingly. Okay, so now we want to print the outcome as to whether the card is Visa, Master, or Amex, or Invalid. So remember, we need to check if Loon check some card equals to zero, which means that the card number key in has passed Loon's algorithm and this is a valid credit card. And if the Visa, which is the first digit, equals to four, and length equals to as such, we'll identify it as a Visa. Else, if the length is 15 and meets the criteria for Amex, which is 34 or 37, then we will identify it as an Amex. Else, if the length meets the requirement for that of a master, and it starts with either 51 or 55 or anything in between, we will print MasterCard. And for all other cases, we will print that it is invalid. And then after that, we will close our loop. For anything else, again, print invalid. Okay, so now let's try this out. So I'll save it and after that I'll run it. So let's just test it first. Right, and then you can see that as we try different card numbers, it seems to work correctly. And yep, there you go. So you can see that this system is actually identifying the cards correctly. And that will be the solution for week 6, Credits of Sentimental. So thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it and you found it to be helpful, do remember to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the upcoming solution walkthroughs for the subsequent problem sets. Thank you.